so in the last class we covered the first step that is required in creating something like chat gpt and now in this class we'll cover the second step so last class we looked at pre-training and one of the emergent property of pre-training which is in context learning and in context learning has its limits as we will discuss and uh, 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 people often resort to instruction tuning these models and so that's what we will study here so instruction tuning is the phase where you actually uh, so, uh, want to uh, modify you transform your pre-trained model to make it follow natural language instructions and as we saw in the last class pre-trained models do not may not follow natural language instruction you might give them instruction they might give you new instruction instead of giving you an answer they might give they might do ha have any weird behavior that they saw during their training data so you want to add a phase where they actually start following instructions this is what we have covered in last class and this is approximately what we will cover today uh, why we need instruction tuning what are the what is the loss function that we use in instruction tuning which is pretty standard and uh, most importantly how do we get the data that we uh, require to do instruction tuning that is the interesting part then we'll look at some instruction tuned models and some of the properties of these instruction tuned models okay so firstly uh, why do we need instruction tuning uh, as you mentioned pretend models have some behavior that they have learned from the huge amount of corpus that they were trained on and but they were the, the corpus was never in the instruction output format right the corpus was html web pages and uh, so what does an html web page look like you will have some questions some answer uh, some examples of the task and so it copies that behavior it does not copy the behavior of following the instruction uh, so Humans generally want that if I give an instruction to a model, it should uh, solve that task, right? And so there is this gap between pretend models and what humans require. And to bridge that gap, you, we, we use instruction tuning. The second thing that people want is that you want the model uh, to have some meta behavior. You want it to follow some meta instructions. For example, you want it to be helpful, let's say. Or you sometimes you want it to behave in a different way than, uh, let's say, you want it to generate verbose outputs or small terse outputs. So whatever these meta behaviors that you want from your model, uh, uh, you can enforce it during the instruction tuning phase. So uh, and fine, but uh, there's a catch that instruction tuning data should be diverse. Otherwise, what will happen if you, let's say, instruction tuning data is all about summarization, what will happen is it will, the model might lose up a lot of behavior that it learned during the pre-training phase. So if the instruction tuning data has to be diverse, when I say diverse, what I mean is that the tasks that are there should be very different. Like for each task, maybe you don't need to have 10,000 examples for each task. Maybe 10 examples for each task is sufficient, but you require thousands of tasks uh, to ensure that it does not focus on a single behavior and it actually remembers whatever it was pretend on so it's a very critical phase instruction during and it has to be done carefully so that the model does not uh, forget the behavior that learned in pre-training and one thing to keep in mind that pre-training is still the most important phase where all the reasoning in, uh, uh, is enforced inside the model instruction tuning will just make these models uh, uh, behave more like what humans want it to be and that's one of the hypotheses that we will see at the end of this lecture okay so a quick uh, idea on what the training loss looks like for uh, these models so uh, instruction tuning is just log like conditional log likelihood maximization so you're given uh, instruction you tokenize the instructions these are the tokenized instructions and these are the uh, tokenized output tokens and you just maximize the log probability of the output tokens given the instruction tokens the instruction may also contain uh, input for example let's say uh, and this is uh, and uh, if you have a decoder only model this is how you will concatenate the instruction tokens and the output tokens feed it to the uh, decoder model and uh, yeah so these are the this is teacher forcing where you actually feed the output tokens also and uh, given the last input token you will generate the first output token given the first output token you will generate the second output token and so on and so forth and uh, this is uh, how you will compute the uh, so this, here you're computing the log probability of the first output token 
given everything else okay so you will compute and then you will sum up the log probabilities this will give you the conditional log likelihood of the output tokens given the input tokens and you will also have an end of text token because you also want to know when to stop generating the sequence so is there any confusion about this loss function this is standard conditional log likelihood uh, for a uh, the way you will compute in a decode only model and if you have an encoder decoder model the uh, loss will still remain the same you still have a conditional log likelihood the way you will feed the tokens will be different the encode in the encoder you will feed the input tokens and to the decoder you will feed a beginning of sequence token uh, and the teacher the teacher force the tokens required for teacher forcing so does, does everybody know what teacher forcing is right uh, whatever uh, you are trying to increase the probability of you feed the tokens of those uh, uh, you feed those uh, the previous tokens of that output sequence to generate the next token se uh, in the sequence so this was about the loss function uh, the more interesting part is where does the data come from a loss function is standard but uh, the uh, finding the data for instruction chaining is uh, much more interesting uh, so one thing is that can we already have uh, well can we you uh, collect the data from human beings and this is a very challenging thing because you uh, as i said you have to ensure that your instruction set is very diverse now uh, and you need high quality instructions also so if you go to let's say amazon mechanical turk and ask them to generate instructions and examples you won't get anything interesting from that data actually because mechanical turk uh, don't have any reason to generate high quality data it's very difficult to get high quality data out of them so what should we do so this is one of the first uh, uh, things that people tried was that we already have a huge amount of nlp data that exists can we convert it into instruction format so let's say you have a uh, 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 the data for uh, SN, uh, natural language inference, uh, whether something entails, uh, whether the hypothesis entails the premise or not. So then you can uh, create a bunch of tem templates for this particular task, the entailment task. One of the uh, template may, uh, may have the instruction that based on the paragraph above, can you conclude this hypothesis? The second one look, might look like, okay, read the following and determine if the hypothesis can be inferred from the premise. So there are bunch, for the same task, you can create a bunch of templates and uh, natural language templates, and uh, you can uh, this will uh, create uh, this will create instruction data for the instruction tuning phase. And uh, this is one task you might have. Uh, uh, there are a bunch of natural language tasks and the data sets available for them. So you don't have to do much effort. All you have to do is this, this the human part comes into this template creation, and rest of the stuff can happen automatically, right? So this uh, this is how the flan uh, the original flan data was created. The second thing that people tried again this is uh, human created data is that uh, we cannot collect uh, the data from Turkus, but can we uh, collect it from natural language practitioners? So uh, in supernatural instructions, natural uh, NLP practitioners were told to create GitHub issues about uh, submitting a data. Uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, for the instruction tuning task, and uh, what we, what people mostly did was picked up uh, people were encouraged to actually pick up existing NLP tasks uh, and convert it into uh, create a task out of it, and this is how a task instruction looked like given an utterance and decent dialogue. Uh, output yes if the utterance contains small talk otherwise no. So people created a bunch of these tasks. People also created modification of those uh, of the existing NLP tasks. Uh, and there were also positive examples and negative examples given with the task so that uh, to in order to encourage uh, the model to do in context. So we also want to preserve that in context learning behavior that is there in the pre-trained model, right? So you would also, uh, they would also add along with the task definition and uh, you, they will also add positive and negative examples so that you can, when doing instruction tuning, you also do in context training, feed the examples and then ask it to uh, solve the task. Maybe feed one example, two example, 10 examples different combination or even zero examples so these are these two these two are human generated uh, instruction tuning data sets then people also tried synthetic uh, instruction tuning data and what i mean by synthetic instruction tuning data is that uh, you use a pre-trained language model or maybe even some existing instruction tune model like instruct gpt 
and you use that model to generate task as, uh, uh, as well as instruction uh, as well as the output and uh, the reason why people looked at that is because the, uh, with supernatural instructions and with the flan uh, with flan there is a limited number of tasks that uh, that were actually nlp tasks that were available and uh, uh, people wanted uh, if you want even more diverse set of tasks uh, people thought that using synthetic uh, synthetically generating those instructions may be uh, the best way forward so this is cheap and easy to obtain because you don't require actually human labor you all require as a language model a uh, powerful language model and surprisingly it turns out that what these uh, language models generate is slightly better quality than uh, or is better has better quality than human data now this uh, statement should be taken with a pinch of salt because it might turn out that what language model generates is completely wrong also but uh, on average it turns out to be better quality so we look at four popular approaches for generating synthetic data in this class uh, the self instruct approach which was the which was a very uh, successful approach uh, which actually showed that you can reach from a pre trained gpt3 to an instruct gpt level model uh, without having any human without requiring any human being to generate uh instruction so this was a very surprising thing when it came out the idea of self instruct that just a pre trained model on its own can generate data to instruction tune itself so that it can reach human uh, what uh, human generated instruction data will achieve then there was this evolve instruct paper which uh, will talk about how do you make the instructions more complex more broad uh, so that the uh, the model is able to perform complex reasoning tasks uh, from the instruction tune data then this orca style generations which have become very popular recently because these are very simple all you have to tell the model in orca style generation is uh be generate detail explanation give uh, 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 things step by step those kind of things you just want to make sure the language model generate detailed outputs and you want to train on the top of those outputs and finally this instruction back translation which is uh, more of a self improvement technique that you want to ensure that whatever you are generating uh is correct by back translating it we'll talk about all these four approaches okay so let's look at the first approach which is self instruct and uh, the idea of self instruct it it's very simple and it's also very interesting uh, so you firstly you start with some existing c tasks uh, which may be human generated so here we they have take, uh, the authors took 175 c tasks one instruction and one example per task and your objective is to generate new instructions and generate new examples or new instances for each instruction okay so the, uh, so there are multiple steps that will happen in the self instruct process one is the instruction generation and uh, then there will be an instruction classification step and finally there will be an example generation step so uh, so instruction generation means you uh, already have some c tasks or instructions and conditioned on those c tasks you want a pre trained lm so remember this L language model that you are going to use is a pre trained one it does not it does not follow instructions all it can do is you give it examples it can generate new examples so it can you give so you give examples of what an instruction looks like to this model and what it can generate is exam is new instru uh, instructions uh, that uh, so as long as your list that you are giving is a diverse list it's not going to copy from that list because it's it knows that okay the input is diverse so it will keep on generating a diverse list of examples if you give a list of instructions which are like very similar to each other it will keep on generating instructions that are very similar to each other so it, it's a pretend language model it will copy whatever behavior you give it in the input examples so this is the way so you have uh, the existing set of human generated instructions you may have an empty list of synthetically generated instructions you sample eight instructions that's what they did they sampled eight instructions uh, from these two list and they gave it to a pretrained language model it generated new instructions and then you want to check whether the generated instructions uh, have similarity with the existing instruction list uh, above a certain threshold if yes you discard it and if not uh, uh, then you add it so let me put if okay this is a very simple process uh, of generating instructions the second step is that you want to identify whether the task is actually a classification task and why do you want to care about whether it being classification so what they observed uh, the authors of this paper observed that uh, when 
it's a classification task what it happens is that the model prefers uh, out, uh, to generate examples of a certain label like if it is sentiment classification the model might prefer positive sentiment it might keep on generating positive sentiment examples instead of generating a proper mix so for classification tasks you want to ensure that you have a good mix of positive or, and negative uh, or all all different types of lab, labels that are there uh, and so uh, so they had this step called classification uh, task identification whether the task is a classification or not and this is the prompt uh, this is sort of the prompt that they gave to the pre-trained uh, language model uh, so again uh, you have some examples of class these are examples of classification uh, and uh, uh, you give a new instruction uh, you give a new instruction uh, and ask it whether is it a classification or not that's it it's uh, you just uh, uh, use the in context learning to identify this property and final the third step uh, is generating examples of the task now uh, Again, this is done in a in context learning fashion. So, what you will do is you, to the pre-trained language model, you will give uh, an existing instruction for which you already have an example. So, you will give it an instruction, give it an example of that instruction. This, this is again an in context example, and uh, you will do it for many. Uh, uh, you will give multiple in context example task one this example task two example two and for the new tasks that you want to generate example you just give the task and ask it to generate an example does this make sense okay okay by the way this is the input first uh, uh, so what i mean by input first so for classification tasks you want to give output first you want to give the label first and then ask it to generate for example if it's sentiment classification you want to say i want to generate an out uh, uh, an input that will have positive sentiment or i want to generate input that will have negative sentiment so that you ensure that there is an equal distribution of different class labels so those are referred to as output first examples and in, input first is the standard way where you will just where you will ask the model to generate an input and then generate an output or sometimes input is not even desired, right? Like if your task is just a question, then uh, like which exercise is best for reducing belly fat? There is no input to that required. Uh, examples where input uh, might be required would be like sort the uh, task is sort the following numbers, and then you will have an input, and you also generate an output. So this is an example of output first, where you give the class label, uh, class lab classify the sentiment. Class label is mixed, and it is suppose uh, the sentence is of a mixed sentiment i guess i enjoy the flavor of the restaurant but the service is too slow uh, so uh, this is an output first uh, generation instance generation okay so this is the complete pipeline uh, this is the instruction generate generation part where you take one uh, take some tasks from the pool yeah so this is the uh, instruction generation part where you uh, take some tasks from the pool and uh, ask the pretend LM to generate some instructions. Then this is the identification of the uh, instruction that you have generated, whether it's a classification or not. Then this is the instance generation part for two different scenarios, input first and output first. And once you have done all this, you will add the instruction and the new examples. You will do some filtering uh, and then add it back to the task pool that you have. And the interesting part of this uh, self-instruct paper was that, so there was uh, before the self-instruct, uh, uh, OpenAI had these powerful models, uh, GPT-3 and instruct GPT. GPT-3 was a model which was a pre-trained language model. It will not follow any instruction. It would just uh, uh, complete your input. And there was the instruct GPT, which was very powerful. It will, you give some instruction and it will uh, try to solve uh, based on solve your instruction. And uh, as you can see, the numbers also reflect that, right? Uh, GPT-3 does not follow any instructions. It has a score of rouge L on some uh, some unseen task from supernatural instructions uh, because it does not follow instruction. And uh, instruct GPT has a score of 40.8. And uh, when did when uh, the authors of self-instruct uh, uh, just took this pre-trained language model and applied self-instruction, they got a score which was very really close to instruct GPT. And this number was very interesting. There is a, a human evaluation that is also very interesting. I uh, will see in the next slide. Uh, then they also tried adding the supernatural instruction data set that we saw previously. 
and that improves the numbers but these numbers that you see the 49.5 and 21.6 they do not translate onto human eval uh, benchmark so although your instruction uh, supernatural instruction tuning training on supernatural instruction tuning improves the performance of supernatural instruction tuning without actually improving human benchmarks that we will see next so these are the human evaluation results on 252 instructions that they curated uh, and this is the gpt self instruct uh, work uh, that they did which they took taking gpt3 and applying self instruct on top of it and uh, uh, and this is the instruct gpt model so the instruct gpt models are still better but this is quite close to the instruct gpt models and supernatural instruction as you can as i mentioned does not actually help uh, the performance that much if you are using self instruct so this was uh, the first approach that became very popular for synthetically generating instruction and exam uh, exam instruction data and examples then uh, uh, there was this paper evolve instruct and the idea was here was that the instructions that were coming up in self instruct were not very complex they were often simple instructions that can be uh, solved easily and as a result if you fine tune using the self instruct examples the model that you end up could not solve very complex reasoning tasks okay uh, so 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 the intuition was can we use llms to actually make these instructions even more complex uh, uh, and so they created an instruction evolver and which is simply an llm that you prompt to generate more complex instructions and then an instruction eliminator which simply checks whether the evolution that you are doing so evolution you by evolution what i mean is that you have a base instruction and you will try to make this instruction more complex increase the depth increase the breadth we'll talk about that in the next slide and the, the eliminator will just simply check whether the evolution of the instruction that you have done ultimately resulted in an instruction that can be answered or not if the instruction turned out to be uh, such that all the responses from the instructions are non informative something like sorry i don't know or uh, something which is non informative uh, then you would eliminate those kind of instructions so there were two parts to the uh, instruction evolver the first one is called in depth evolution and uh, the idea of in depth evolution is that uh, you have a base instruction simply the base instruction could simply be something like uh, what is 1 plus 1 equal to that is your base instruction it's a very simple instruction now if you want to do uh, in depth evolution what you will do is you will take in this case they took a uh, instruction tuned model gpt 3.5 i think and uh, they asked gpt 3.5 this is the a prompt i want you to act as a prompt rewriter your objective is that you are given a prompt and you have to create a more complex version of it uh, that so that this gpd4 chat gpd can uh, cannot handle it and uh, the rewritten prompt must be reasonable and must be understood these are standard things that you write you know now here the part that you see in red is the constraint they are telling uh, to the evolver that uh, so here they are telling is that uh, complicate by adding more constraints to the input and then you give the prompt and then uh, then you have the uh, rewritten prompt so you can uh, uh, in the red part you can replace by adding uh, adding more constraints by let's say you can say that uh, add more uh, i'm guessing something like uh, um, uh, increase reasoning steps in the prompt or something like that you can change the prompt to according to what you want the new instruction to look like and then there was an in breadth evolution which is simply that you want to create a brand new prompt from that prompt and new prompt does not have to be uh, uh, similar to the previous prompt but has to be from the same domain like if you were working with the uh, uh, algebraic equations you probably want a prompt new prompt which is also generating algebraic equation <coughs> and the length and the difficulty level should be same so this is uh, here you're not making the prompt more complex but you are just increasing the scope you increase the coverage of the prompts so uh, the third uh, approach which uh, is used in a lot of uh, lang uh, language models that are created uh, is the orca style generation and uh, the here the intuition was that if you ask uh, if you simply so the, before this orca style generation pe what people used to do is, is called distillation and what distillation means is that you will take this gpt4 gpt3.5 models you will feed the input or your instruction whatever it is there to the model and you will generate outputs and do 
train and uh, train your language model on the same outputs right okay so basically you're just trying to copy what gpt4 generates that's it <clears throat> and uh, what happened was that GPT-4 often generates uh, would generate very small responses, and uh, which is not a problem in general. But there is a very little information in there. When you want to do distillation, you want to copy as much information from the teacher model to the student model. And if the teacher model is generating just one token, there is not much information to copy. So then the question was, how can we copy more information from a powerful model like GPT-4? How can we force these models to give more information so that my student model has more information to learn from okay so the idea was that let's add a system level instruction which would guide your gpt4 or whatever your uh, teacher model is there to generate more tokens more uh, more reasoning perhaps uh, it would give me more uh, a better idea of the brain of gpt4 so force it gpt4 to generate more tokens and train on those tokens so not arbitrary tokens you're not telling gpt4 okay just generate uh, the word the hundred times because that would be non-informative but you want to get a picture of how the gpt4 brains looks like so that and you can uh, so that you can use that information uh while training your uh, language model while instruction tuning your language models so you would add something like add that uh, let's think step by step of the solution uh, or you will add that explain the solution like uh, uh i explain the solution like you're explaining to a five year child or you can ask that okay be more informative in your response so in the system level instruction you can give all these possible uh, instructions to force gpt4 to generate a bigger output so here the task if you look at the uh, top image and the uh, bottom image the task is same uh the input is solve this question does uh, okay what is this question italian language and you have to pick a suitable option and in one case the uh, uh, gpt4 simply outputs the correct answer which is fine but it is not sufficient for instruction tuning my model so i will tell the model okay please provide a detailed answer why you think this is answer uh, your answer is correct so then in that case it will generate a huge reasoning that based on the given options and the context uh refrigerator door is closed uh, something something yeah so then th so then this information becomes much more usable uh, to train uh, uh, your language student model does it make sense it's a very simple idea. Just uh, force the model to generate more tokens so that you have much more information to train on. So this is called Orca style generations. Finally, there is an approach called instruction back translation. And in, uh, in instruction back translation, uh, the idea is that you invert the problem on its head. So uh, generally, what we, in self-instruct, what we saw, we asked pre-trained language model to generate instructions and then examples given instructions, right? Here they said, okay, we already have a huge amount of data on the web, can we, which is not in the instruction format, but can I convert it into a format that looks like instruction and output and so on. So what they did was, uh, they first they collected uh, human written instruction response uh, uh, data and they trained uh, a, a language model like Llama to convert the response into an instruction okay so here they are creating a back a, a back translator model which takes the uh, output first and generates the instruction later okay and then they took a huge amount of unlabeled text on the web you have uh, unlimited amount of that and they gave it to the back translation model so the back, job of the back translation model is to infer what instruction is happening in these examples so this will give you uh, so the this, this back translator model will give you uh, instruction for each uh, or for a bunch of outputs that you give to it then they evaluated uh, the quality uh, of these uh, instruction comma output pairs that have been generated by the back translator and uh, finally once you have removed the low quality pairs you can do the forward uh, mapping now so uh, you used uh, uh, a back translator to generate instructions and now you uh, uh, train your language model to generate the examples given the instruction the, uh, the forward training so these are some examples of instruction tuned models for which we know the data set uh, there are a lot of instruction tuned models for which you have no idea about the data set like chat gpt or uh, even llama 3.1 uh, uh, but for some we do know like flan t5 is a, just t5 11 billion this is t5 11 billion is a pre-trained model this is a pre-trained model and this is this has been trained on the uh, this has been instruction tuned on the flan data set similarly 
alpaca 7 billion is uh, uh, llama 7 billion which has been instruction tuned on the synthetic data set generated using self instruct so self instruct is one of the first approaches that we saw right similarly wizard lm uh, 7 billion is llama 7 billion that has been instruction tuned on another synthetic data set generated using evolve instruct and the third one is mistral 7 billion open orca which is mistral 7 billion that has been instruction tuned on orca style generations so so you can see that all these different instruction uh, synthetic data generation approaches have been used in a bunch of instruction tuned models uh, these are only uh, four that we have listed but there are a large number of uh, instruction tuned models that are out there so finally some of the properties of these instruction tuned models now you that you have got an instruction tuned model what can we say about them so uh, one observation was that once you have an instruction tuned model that has been trained on a huge diverse set of instruction data uh, they are quick learners what does it mean that let's say you have a few examples of a certain task that you want to uh, do supervised training on then if you feed those examples to an instruction tuned model uh, that model will quickly adapt to the task new task whatever uh, task that you have so here they show that using only six percent training examples uh, you are able to achieve a pretty good rouge score uh, of 70 uh, and uh, if you had taken a pre-trained model so t5 is a pre-trained model this is pre-trained and you had used 100 percent training samples to do a fine tuning of a, these are uh, of a specific task you would have gotten a root score of 70.99 but uh, if you take uh, a instruction tuned model tk instruct is an instruction tuned model using some data set i forgot exactly which one i think it's flan but might be different i think it's supernatural instruction yeah so uh, so if you take an instruction tuned model you, using only 6% samples, you can get an equivalent score. So they are quick learners. You require a very few amount of samples for of the particular task to make them work for your task. Then there was this another hypothesis called the superficial alignment hypothesis. And uh, the idea of this hypothesis is that, uh, that as, as I mentioned earlier, that pre-training is the phase where all the reasoning gets incorporated in, into your model and the alignment simply teaches it that which sub distribution of output formats should be used when interacting you uh, should be used that's it so uh, it I mean i mean I, these are hypotheses so they may not be perfect but this is uh, what it says is that whatever reasoning you want to incorporate to the model do it during pre training uh, instruction tuning is simply going to align uh, simply going to adopt itself to the format that you require from it that's it and as what this suggests that if suppose if you if you are all you are doing is that adapting it to a new format that uh, that is required by humans then a small number of examples should be should be sufficient right and that's what they did they took some 1000 very high quality examples from stack exchange wiki high uh, and reddit again reddit has a bad quality examples also so, but they did a lot of filtering to get very high quality examples and uh, natural instructions so they uh, got uh, 1000 examples of very high quality and they instruction tune on only on this small set of examples and uh, what they observed so this approach is called uh, lima or less is more for alignment and uh, what they observed is that just training on these instruction tune examples uh, gives you pretty high score in terms of human preference you don't need if you only care about human preference or, or, uh, or using a very small number of examples turned out to be sufficient you can see gpt4 is still way better but uh, i think here the base model was alpaca uh, llama uh, i think alpaca 65 some base model i forgot actually i'm guessing it was a 65 billion base model so these are main takeaways uh, that uh, from this lecture if you have a pre-trained model, uh, instruction tuning makes it more usable by humans so that you, humans can give an instruction that can follow it. And it's simply achieved by maximizing the conditional log likelihood of the output given the instruction. <clears throat> and the data set that you use for instruction tuning either can be generated synthetically or can be human generated. And finally, they can quickly, these instruction tuned models can quickly learn from a small amount of labeled data. Adopt can be quickly adopted for a specific task using a small amount of data.